Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collector podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now, enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons! Terrorize! Greetings once again. This is Rick Alvarez with another episode of Cut the Tape. I've got a couple different items here uh, that I thought I would open from different points of, uh, of TF history. I've got, uh, let's see, Studio Series number 45 Drift. I've got uh, Combiner Force Optimus Prime from Robots in the Skies. I have X-Trans Bots Overheat. This is the G2 version of uh, Drag Strip. And then I have uh, something that's pretty new. This is the uh, War for Cybertron Siege Deluxe Rap Ratchet from Walgreens. All right. Let's start with... This is the only one that comes in a non-window box. So let's start with this. Um, X-Trans Bots has been killing it with these Masterpiece Stunicons. I'm really happy with these. Really, really happy with these. Uh, so, we have a little art of the vehicle mode. We've got a nice black box with uh, the character art is uh, nice and uh, got a nice sheen to it. All right, it's a very nice box. Uh, unlike uh, some other companies, you can't stack this box and create an image. Uh, I kind of find that stuff annoying. I like to just line my boxes up. So this is the stuff I do appreciate. So, we got our tools. I'm gonna cut the tape, flip my knife, right? Because I don't wanna, if I had my knife out this way, I would probably end up cutting the box, which is what I don't wanna do. So I flip my knife so that the sharp edge is not pointing towards the flap. I press on one side, if it doesn't open, stick the knife in the other side, and there we go. And the reason I do that, I don't want to create uh, a crease in the flap. So for example, if let's say the box is closed, right? What did we used to do in the 80s? We'd stick our fat sausage fingers in here and pull the box open, and that's why all the boxes from the 80s have that crease right here in the middle. Cause that's what we do. Cause we didn't know any better. I didn't know, I was just a kid. I was a kid. I didn't know. So let's see, it comes in styrofoam. Pretty solid. Uh, you know, say what you will about styrofoam and it not being a very green thing to pack it in. It does do a good job of protecting the figure. So, we have our instruction booklet sealed. So, we actually have to cut this open in order to get the uh, instructions out. It's not taped. Uh, it comes with a little card. It comes with a little, little card. A little tiny card. Just a little tiny baby card. Uh, and there's no, this is a little weird. There's no tape on this. And here he is. Here is Le Drag Strip. And something fell out. Oh, it's an extra face. Okay. Had me worried there for a bit. It's never a good sign when you open up a toy and a little piece falls out. You're like, oh, what was that? Just an extra face. Got some nice hard rubber tires. These are really hard rubber tires on here. There's no uh, plastic film over it or over any piece to protect the paint from getting uh, scuffed up in transit. But you really don't have that problem when you deal with styrofoam. It comes with a, a lower mouth. I think this is actually for a different character. 
and then it comes with an extra face. That's, that's in there pretty tight. Comes with an extra face. Sometimes I wish my kids would come with extra faces so I wouldn't have to look at your sourpuss face all the time. You can, you can say hi. Hi. They can't see that. Hi. Hi. So what I like about these boxes, you know what, usually I buy two, one to open, one to keep sealed. What I like about these non-window boxes that if you take care of them the right way, you'll never know this, is, this isn't sealed. So you can just put this on your shelf and display it. You can't do the same thing with this. If you were to open this, you would, you know, you put this on your shelf, you put this on your peg hanger, your peg hook, you know it's open, right? Th these are doubles, right? So we're going to save Ratchet for last. He's, he's the newest thing. Um, let's go with R.I.D. Combiner Force Optimus. Uh, I got this at clearance. This was originally $20. And I got this on clearance for nine bucks or less. Uh, this is from 2016. Back of the box pretty much explains what it does. Looks like Optimus combines into his cab and trailer mode, all from one figure. And he's got a little Minicon partner with him called High Test. So in 1987, Optimus Prime, Power Master Optimus Prime, came with a uh, Power Master called High Q. So High Test. That's that's a good name. That's a good name. All right, let's see here. One thing I will say about RID is this is doing something which I never, I kind of wanted to do, but we never implemented it. And we, we didn't have it all quite figured out back then, which is where you scan something on the figure and then it leads you to an app and tells you about the bio and stuff like that. So we, that was something we were in talks about when I was at Hasbro, but we never enacted it. Um, it's been a few years, so the technology is there. It's easier to roll out. It's easier to program. Um, so there is no bio on this box. There's no bio on this box. It doesn't tell you anything about who Optimus Prime is. If this is your first Optimus Prime and you've never seen the movies or anything, it doesn't tell you anything about it. I don't like that. I think when you scan it, it not only gives you a bio, the bio should also be on the box, but it, you know, it gives you the bio again, but then it plays a piece of animation. Oh, you know what? I'm going to use this as, as an example. See, so back in the 80s, you know, you know, we would cut, we would just peel the tape off, right? And then we'd stick our fat sausage fingers in here and we do that. That's why, see that? That's why all the boxes from the 80s have that crease there because we would do that. So we didn't know any better because we were children. All right, comes with instructions. Pretty basic instructions. I mean, this is, you know, uh, for around ages nine. So it doesn't need to have instructions in a bag or be particularly interesting. The instructions on one side, copyright info on the other side. Again, no bio. It's an ad for what the app does and it's an ad for Soundwave on the inside. I don't dig that. We got a piece of cardboard. And we've got a plastic tray. Pretty cost efficient. Pretty cost efficient. We've got our high test. This is the first time I'm opening any of these Combiner Force, Minicon, spitting, jump, having, starting, falling figures from the RID 2.0 line. I have I have the whole line. I just I very rarely open a, a an RID figure just because it started coming out while I was in the transition of moving to this new house. So this is this is the first Combiner Force figure I have ever messed around with. So it's pretty easy to get out. That's another reason why I haven't put these on my 
must open soon list. I forgot how young these skew. Even though it says ages nine, like, you know, Beast Wars was like ages nine. You know? This is just. It's, it's really young. It's really, really young. Let's see if I can transform it without looking at the instructions. That's how I used to do it. Back when I was a little kid. There we go. It's pretty intuitive, but just because it's intuitive doesn't necessarily mean it's good. Mm. There it is. Again, it's for a different age group. And then high test would fit on here. Up top. Not a whole lot of fun. Here, Casey, come here. Take that. Go see if you can figure out how to transform that. Get back to me. Uh, okay. Studio Series 45 Drift. This came out a while ago. Just getting to it now. I've got one sitting on the shelf. One I'm going to open. Boxes like this, window boxes. And what we mean by window boxes, the box has a window. You know, yeah. It's going to look like I open it, so that's why I have to get two. So this box I'll recycle. Comes with a pair of instructions, comes with the mandatory um, display backer. I am surprised, here we are, 45, closing in on 50 figures later, and we're still doing these. Remember titaniums? You know, it's like the last wave didn't even get stands. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good, you know, but then you, know, you gotta put the arms out like that. There you go, see? That's Optimus Prime. This is the helicopter version of Drift. I, I didn't even realize that. This is the helicopter version of Drift. This is a whole new figure. I, I didn't even realize that. Wow. Let's cut these real quick. Casey, go find that little piece. Fell over there over there looks like this Casey it looks like this on that side Casey you're you're going into the wrong room anybody else have kids you try to teach them about transfer there you go it's on the other side of the desk all right all right I try to teach them about transformers and they're like Casey, it's right there. All right. So let's see here. One thing that is pretty consistent with the Studio Series is the scale of the deluxes. I am not crazy about the scale of the deluxes on this. This is like a little bit bigger than a basic figure was during the Beast Wars line. I mean, you know, not everything can be compared to Beast Wars, but Beast Wars was such an important part of Transformers, and I feel like everyone has a Beast Wars figure from one line or another, whether it's Beast Wars or an Energon toy or uh, 
a movie toy. There's there's a Beast War re, Beast Wars repaint for everyone. Let's see here. There's little missiles here. This is pretty cool. I'll mess around with this guy. Just uh, not too crazy about the size of the deluxe. I understand. Hey, it's got a lot of it's got a lot more pieces. You know, it's got some some more paint app, and there is a lot of paint app on this figure. This figure's got a lot of paint apps. A paint app or deco. It's all these little things. Now this is probably one paint app, even though it it looks like it's several. Um, it's probably just one spray mask that comes on. A spray mask is uh, could be like a metal sheet that fits over the part while it's in production. So this is on assembly line. It goes, it fits under the metal sheet, comes on top here, gets spray painted, sheet gets removed, and only the parts that were exposed get the paint on them. So that's why you, you like, if you collect action figures, you see a lot of figures around like the eyes and like the head, and especially Nick Fury. Like they can never like spray paint the uh, the eye patch correctly, like the mask just never really works with him. Eye patches are tough if you know you don't have the best people working on it. All right, finally we've got Rache, or uh, as he's called here, Ratchet. A lot of Ratchet figures lately. I like this Ratchet figure a lot because he's got parts that are reminiscent of Generation One. I'm 40 years old. I grew up with G1. Ratchet was one of my first Transformers when I when I was a little girl. So, this is the Walgreens exclusive Ratchet. This is a remold of the War for Cybertron Siege Ironhide. It has additional weapons. It has uh, three new weapons that are exclusive to this figure. It doesn't come with the long uh, cannon, arm cannon that Ironhide has. And it's got a new head. I always appreciate when they put a new head on Ratchet to distinguish him from Ironhide. That's important. Again, I'm going to recycle the packaging because I have another one sitting up on the shelf over there. It's got the backer, which is pretty generic. Like... It's weird to me that this is not an Autobot or a Decepticon symbol or even a picture of Cybertron. Like, what what does this symbol invoke? W what does that mean? We've got Ratchet. He's held down by some plastic ties. Now, usually I have a pair of clippers or uh, nail clippers, rather. To free the figures from their plastic prison since I just reorganized the area over here because I'm working uh, I don't know they disappeared so that was pretty easy he's out of the package we've cut the tape on him instantly the first thing that sticks out to me about this figure is you know how like the siege figures have uh, you know, battle damage on him. It just looks like he's dirty. It looks like he's like, like somebody spilled coffee on him and it just kind of dried on him. And another thing that's like getting to me, like, I think the siege line is great. Look, I, I, I like this figure a lot. I'm just not crazy about white tires. All right. White walls on classic cars are cool. All white wheels on a white car just, I don't know. That doesn't do it for me. I'm not crazy about it. So, kind of a mixed bag. We've cut the tape today. Kind of a mixed bag. But, uh, hey, I'm glad we opened uh, the things that we opened. We got to uh, compare and contrast some packaging. We opened a little bit of this, a little bit of that. We got some R.I.D. in there. We got some Siege. We got some movie. And we got a third-party Masterpiece figure. That was pretty good. And Casey made an appearance. Casey was playing with this. She was trying to transform this. 
didn't quite work out. So, no, it didn't quite work out. Well, thank you very much for uh, for tuning in. Casey, do you have anything you want to say? I'm eight years old. Bye. You're eight years old, yes. Casey is eight years old. That's important information to know. So, and, I have a sister named Maddie. and she has a sister named Maddie. Thank you. Yes. All right. So, remember, doesn't matter how long a toy sits on your shelf, one of these days, find some time, cut the tape, and be nice to each other. Thank you.